Uh, this morning I'm going to go into my favorite subject. This is called the BI triangle. And for those of you who have ever seen the, the ESB and the I, E stands for employee, S stands for self-employed or small business, B stands for big business, and I stands for an investor. So to be a B or an I, you have to have what's called the BI triangle. And uh, the definition of a big business person versus a small business person is that a small has less than 500 employees and a B has 500 more. That's by Forbes' definition. Other thing too, as to be an investor, I don't care if it's a stock, bond, real estate, or a business. As an investor, I'm always looking at this BI triangle. I want to know how well structured is it before I put my money into the deal. Okay? The trouble with most S's is that they can't stop working, because if they stop, the income stops. Like if you're a dentist, if you stop, the income stops. So that, those are some of the differences here. So my rich dad trained me to build businesses here. So the most important thing is a mission. Next part is a team. And next is leadership. So when you look at these things here, one of the reasons that I went to military school is that military school for four years, the most important thing is mission. Are you a team player? Some people are, some people aren't. And if you're not a team player, you can't be a leader. So we're a constantly trained, you know, for 10 years of my life, mission, team, leadership. I had to follow orders and then give orders as the case may be. So this is traditional military school and this here is traditional business schools. So uh, when, I'm, when I meet people and they have, they have a business, they've got a hot new product, and people think product is it. Product sucks. The world's full of product. You know, there's, you ever go to Hong Kong, there's product coming out of that place all over the place. Then there's legal. Unfortunately, you have to have attorneys. You know, but you've got to protect. Like even with real estate, you might have to have the meets and bounds and the property lines. With me, intellectual property, I want to make sure my property is defined. As I said, in Israel, the problem is a property dispute. Who owns that land? Then you have systems. Like, you know, there's, like a, a business is a system of systems. A car is a system of systems. Body is a system of systems. There's a, you know, the cardiovascular system. There's the lung system, there's a brain system, there's a digestive system and all this. So as an entrepreneur, I'm always putting systems together. Systems are traditionally the, the engineers, you know, web, web systems, accounting systems, uh, marketing systems and all this. So as a business owner, I don't want to do any of this, but I want to have somebody in charge of my systems here. So I, don't, I, do, I do less, earn more money. Then this is communications. Okay, that's sales, marketing, this external communications internal communications. And a lot of, a lot of I, I had a hard time transitioning from the military coming into the, to the civilian worlds because a lot, of, a lot of civilians, you know, when I came out of the military, they just don't really be, like being called, hey, asshole, get this done. You know, they, they really don't appreciate that. And, and you get sued for that today, so I had to learn to change my communications internally. <laughs> okay. And then the reason I went to Xerox when I got out of the military was learn how to sell communications. And then the reason most people cannot sell, they haven't been trained to do it, but also fear, the fear of rejection. Okay. And the last is cash flow. If a person mismanages their cash flow, I don't care how much money you have. I mean, we all know people have a lot of money, but they're broke at the end of the month. So it, it, this is called the bottom line okay, in business. And again, I'll say it is in my opinion, it is the number one reason businesses fail is because the entrepreneur is lousy at communications. They can't sell. As I wrote in Rich Dad, Poor Dad, you know, I'm not a best writing author, I'm a best selling author. And there's a very big difference. So a lot of times I meet accountants and attorneys, these are the accountants here, these are the attorneys here. They're very smart people, but they're boring. You know, they can't sell. Then they get angry that some punk like me comes along and makes the big bucks. But if you look at Steve Jobs, that guy can sell, internally, externally. Gates, he can sell. Trump can sell. Do you understand? So the, what we're going to be talking today about is external communications. Internal communications, different subject again. Okay? That's more in the team building aspects of it. So the way I was trained to be in communications is this. Is there's four a, three aspects of it. One is PR. PR is public relations. Okay? The next one is marketing, and then comes sales. Now, as an entrepreneur, 
when I meet somebody that comes up to me and say, well, I've got this great new product here, one of my first questions I ask them is, you know, how well can you sell? Because if you can't sell, you don't have any income, period. Because you, you've got to raise capital. The first thing when I started a rich dad company, I had to raise like 150,000 bucks. Not that hard to do, okay? But if you can't sell, you can't raise 150,000 bucks. I mean, a lot of accountants, attorneys, they can't sell. They can't raise capital. It is your number one skill as an entrepreneur is you're raising capital. And that's from a sale. I'm either selling my investor as to why their money is better with me, or I'm selling my employees why they should work for less money. And three, I gotta sell my customer as to why my product is more important than their money. Okay? That's sales. Marketing is all the, I would say, the hype, the awareness, the uh, letting people know what you're about, what your company stands for. So like a brand is marketing. That's why we spent so much time developing the rich dad as a brand. People know what we stand for. Okay? What we stand for is, is what the rich teach their kids about money. I do not support necessarily saving money, mutual funds, diversifications, and hard work as an employee. I do not stand for that. I do not cross that line. You know, I, mean, I need to be true to my brand. So I'm only marketing to less than 10% of the population. But in my marketing, I'm clear on who my target market is, who I'm talking to, but I gotta be true to my brand. There's nothing worse than some guy like a John Kerry who flip-flops on their brand. Like uh, in my world of financial advice, there's a lot of people who were mutual fund guys in 1995 and then became real estate guys in 2005. You know what I mean? <laughs> so their marketing is, I mean, they're all over the place in their market. They're changing their messages and all this. And PR is basically how much print space do I get? How much advertise, you know, how much the newspaper write about me? Uh, television, like, I'll be on the Today Show sometime next week or something uh, to be with Donald Trump. That's all PR. It's all part of my positioning package and all this. Rich Dad is a company, sucks here and sucks here. We're terrible at it. You know, we don't have any marketing. Where we win is we're very strong on PR. Does that make sense to you guys here? We're unbelievable at PR. To have a book that's been on the New York Times bestseller list for six years, to be able to call Donald and talk to him and all that, that's priceless. I don't, I don't ever mess with that relationship. You guys clear on that? So, and then with that, this is my friend Blair Singer at Sales Dogs. So, this, he's at this end. Now, if your PR sucks and your marketing sucks, then you've really got to sell like a wild man. Does that make sense to you guys here? Because you haven't done the preliminary work to get to the sale here. So nobody knows who you are, what you stand for, where you're positioning, where are your price. Are you high price, medium price, low price? If they don't know that, as a salesperson, you gotta sit there and pound on them. So when I worked for Xerox, it was pretty easy. You know, I was training. Sales was, we're the most expensive copier on the market. We knew that, we had to go in, that was our position. We went in, we had to sell over that. But people knew who we were, brand awareness, okay? If your marketing sucks, <laughs> and your PR is bad, you're really in big trouble. Or if your PR is really good, but your marketing is bad, you still have to sell like a wild person. Okay, so that's kind of the relationship there. And they're three completely different subjects. They're external marketing avenues. And I have spent most of my life, I am still to this day, studying this subject. Do you realize that by being good at this, is the difference between just being a millionaire and a billionaire. That's the difference. It's not just rich and poor. How good you are in this is the difference between millions and billions. It is that powerful. And it's all words. It's all communication. It's not what law school you went to, what accounting school, you, what firm you worked to. It's how well you do here. So I never stop my education on this. Right now our company is studying another book on this subject. 